And when you are victorious, they create tests for you, which you call trial, so that they can prove you before Jesus can tell you, I told you, it's my child, it's my child. In the midst of the trial, look at him. He's still hanging on me. He knows me. He trusts me. And after the trial, he promotes you. So, God is working on behalf of you. And from this October today, you will see more of his work. Here, O Christ, with tabernacle. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He will show you that he's working on your behalf this week. It's impossible for God not to do it. This is an undertaking. God works for those who love it. Now, if that be the case, why would God work for you? For many reasons, but among several reasons, I want you to recognize that all these things are benefits because you are a son of God. Because you are a son of God or a child of God. Now let's come to the greatest weapon that God gave you, which is your mouth. Your mouth is the greatest weapon that heaven gave to you. You know, I will say to mankind, excuse me, by mouth somebody who is a, a pauper is made a prime minister, born in a derelict place, joins the political party. Everybody will just say by mouth that we vote for you and he becomes their head automatically. Is that correct? Somebody who his life is on the air, a person who sits in the office of a judge, we say life imprisonment. Nobody changes it. Maybe he didn't really do why he's condemned, the, the thing that he was accused of. But anyway, if all evidences point to him, we have seen that happen, double jeopardy. We have seen that happen a, a number of times. People who have been condemned to death and then they, they are going for death and suddenly the real perpetrator, after 14 years of waiting on parole, the real perpetrator came up and said, I did it. And they looked at evidence, discovered that it was miscarriage of justice. And on his way to death row, he was set free. All right, but it's a mouth that spoke and is condemned. With your mouth, you are condemned. With your mouth, you are justified. So your mouth is a powerful weapon. So if that be the case, there are four. Jesus says something about us, which we will explore. Just Matthew, look at 16. Matthew 16, 18 is the first thing we are looking at. Agent theory of God. We are agents of God. It says, and I tell you the truth, or tell you that, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Come on, CFT church. When Jesus appeared to me, after he appeared to me, and he eventually told me to start this house, I said to Jesus that, well, I'm a surveyor. I don't know how to start church. <laughs> I grew in the Pentecostal movement all my life. I was born in the church. I wasn't born in hospital. I, mean, I think, I'm sure you know that. Uh, are you looking at me like this? How I many of you did not know that Apostle Williams was not born in hospital? You didn't know that before. Raise your hand. Be, be, sincerely. Okay, so now you know. I was not born in the hospital. My mother was a priestess of Baal. If you didn't know, know now. My father was a chief priest, Satan. If you didn't know that, know that. Oshon Wale, it's not, it's his baptismal name from the devil. Wizard has come home. And my parents became barren. But my father, you are the one who made me go to this story because if you follow me, you must know my story. So that from my own mouth, somebody won't tell you that this is what I post. You say, hey, hey, hey. I heard it from his mouth. Yes. My father used to get children from Lucifer into barren womb. If they remove a woman's womb, my father had the remedy to make another womb happen there. And that woman will conceive, but by the devil. It's like they got somebody's eyes out. He has a remedy that from Satan that they will take, get a leaf. They will put in their eyes. Another eyes will happen there. So he was Satan in the flesh. Oh, Jesus double-crossed him because of me. The Lord told them that you give back to his son. 
And we cannot allow you to give to battle that son when you are serving Satan. And for that, we, we seal the womb of your mother, of your wife. My father called every devil that he used to consult to heal my mother. Physician healed thyself. They didn't answer him anymore. Because when God points his finger to you, you are just most fortunate. That's why I'm, I have problem with people who always say, they deliver me, they deliver, deliver nonsense. It's because God has not pointed to you. That's why you are, you are only on the floor. And people are saying, ah, you, ah, you cast out demons, deal with demons. Accept Jesus, demon will get out of your body, my friend. <laughs> the Jesus I serve is different from the Jesus many people talk about. That is the Jesus I offer to you. <laughs> He's the Jesus who appeared unto me over years, several times. He's the same Christ yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday, he was preaching in the church, and a demon possessed stood up, and he said, shut up, come out. And that was it, and the man was free. If you have a different method, I wonder the Jesus you are serving. He got to a blind man, he said, what do you want me to do? He said, I might see. He said, okay, permission to see. See, therefore, that is the Jesus I serve. I don't know the Jesus that you have to be doing all the gyms to get this, the blind see. When my father was a devil, he was a gymnastic like that. But then I was conceived. So when I was conceived, my father and my mother made vow that if you give us a son, we will, it is yours. Because as a Satan worshiper, first son, prima facie, belong to the devil. You go and argue with Satan, if you worship him, that your first son is yours, then he will show you pepper. So they understood that. I said, uh, if this Jesus Christ delivered me from the devil, if you want to know more of my story, go and read my book on my encounter with Jesus Christ and his holy angels. You'll find a full detailed story there. That's how they came to church. So when I was conceived, my mother did not attend maternity she did not attend antenata. She did not attend postnata <laughs> or prenata. My mother was coming to church. They would pray in water, and that's all he drank. And I grew up with that, not falling sick. Also. So when I was, when it was time for me to be born, in my days, we give birth in the church. The, my mother came with her belly, went to the back of the church where there is vestry. And that is where ministers of God in those days who mentor me, who I follow, like me now, began to pray. When they began to pray, the angels of God did the delivery. That is how Apostle Williams was born in the church, not in the hospital. I'm not saying that you did bad by burning in hospital. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, my, my God, Satan is fed up. So that's how I was born in the hospital. So all my life, I don't know any life. Social life is church. Spiritual life is church. Mental life is church. Emotional life is church. Psychological life is church. And then the American life or whatever. <laughs> Psychological life is church. I don't know anything than Jesus. Of course, I, when I became conscious, I consciously accepted Jesus into my heart. Am I talking to you? You are God's agent. So let me go on and finish my preaching. So if you look at this scripture, Jesus said, I will build my church. And that's the scripture he gave me at the birth of CFT. That was my first message in this house. On the 4th of March, 1990. And the gates of hell cannot pray. Why is Jesus saying this first? It's because of what he's about to say. This is where agent theory was birthed. He says, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. But on this rock, that is faith. Revelation of the Holy Spirit. Because before this time, Jesus asked them, who am I? And people are saying all manners of things. And Peter said, you are Jesus, the Son of God. He now said to Peter, Peter, son of Jonah, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. And so he said, upon this rock, which is revelation of the Holy Spirit, 
I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot pray. That's why CFT fear nothing. Nothing. Fear nothing. If you're a member of this church, you follow me well, you can't fear anything. You can come with fear. You can't remain in your fear. If you're still fearing, it's because you have not followed me really. You have been looking at me in the, in the far distance. Whatever Satan do that happens is not your business because you have somebody who is working behind it. His name is Jesus. Am I talking to you? And so the Bible says, gates of hell will not prevail. Why gates? Because in the gates in those days, that's where they take decisions. You remember Deborah? She starts at the gate. The people who have this food will go to the gate, and he will, she will sort it at the gate. And the elders of the nation will come to the gate when they want to decide. So what the Lord is revealing here is that I will build this church, Christ with Tabernacle, and any decision from the pit of hell cannot prevail against it. And when we say Christ with Tabernacle, we're not talking about this building, because we were Christ with Tabernacle, not this building. It's when we came here, the building changed its identity. If we leave this place, this building will come back anything. But as long as we are here, we Christ with Tabernacle, real Christ with Tabernacle, we are here. This building is called Christ with Tabernacle International Churches. So, Jesus said, it will build you. Any decision made by devil or demons or occult has no power over you. Jesus said, the gates of hell, the decision of hell, it does not matter what the names are. When they are deciding over you, it cannot. It is non grata because you are a child of God. Not because of anything, but because you are a child of God. And Jesus was about to tell you that you are his agent on earth. So he first tried to strengthen your soul, your faith. That look, before I let you know who you really are, the authority you have, let me tell you, do anything, I will handle it. Cause trouble for the devil. He will meet me, Jesus. Okay? So then he went to the, to the agent's theory. Look at the next verse. Shall we read this together? I will give you. Aha. Uh -huh. Excuse me. You know what an agent is? Those of you who are business owners or who are who work in you know private limited organization or PLCs, public limited organizations, or if you're in a partnership, but the case may be, it doesn't matter what your local business is. An agent is somebody who occupies an office that speaks on behalf of his organization. That's an agent. Can I say something to you? Anybody who is an agent of an organization, when he speaks on behalf of the organization, he binds the owner of the organization to the third party. In that ability to do so, you operate two authorities. The first authority is the actual authority, you remember, and the second is the apparent. Apparent authority is what they call a sensible authority. So, whether the authority is expressed, written down, or implied by virtue of action, that authority cannot be broken. Excuse me. Look. Those of you who are directors in your office, there are meetings you can attend on behalf of your office, and when they are talking, you dare not say a word on behalf of your company. Because if you say a word in that meeting, that word will bind your office. Those of you who are in solicitors or who are, you know, legal practitioners, let me just refresh your mind. You know, there is something that is called in law obligation. If you say a word and that word is such that the third party rely on your word to perform an act or to withdraw from an act, you are bound by your word. You must fulfill that obligation. So if somebody in your office just went and spoke on your behalf, you say, junior staff, finish. You must fulfill that obligation. Even if they didn't put their 
you are obliged to. Let me tell you. So, whoever is acting on behalf of an authority becomes an agent of the authority. And let me say, level of agency different from one authority to the other. is determined. Your power as an agent is determined by the organization you represent. I just told them in New Cross now, this is fresh in our mind. Look at French government and American government. They are both in Niger. Niger took, you know, military took over the government, and Niger said that we don't want French, we want French ambassador to leave now. And the French president was, was saying some rattlings at the time that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't recognize you are not legitimate. Well, who, who is legitimate, you will know. But there are two governments that is involved in that Niger. You have the French government, you have the American government. Why didn't they tell America to leave? You are talking about higher power. Okay? So for the French government, well, they said, well, you have been making us, making our forefathers now, we'll, we'll take our breaths from your mouth. No more milk free. Okay? When, you know, the president of, of, of France first spoke, I said, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Because I know the end of the matter, he has to leave. Now they are leaving with the whole of their army. But America stay put. Power pass. Power. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, your authority as an agent is determined by the empire you represent. Because when you speak, you bind the organization. And those of you who are in managerial position in office, who are in practice, professional practice, especially regulated practices, you be very careful. I'm telling you now as a member of this, this church that your mouth should not just be po, 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 so that you will not destroy the blessing God is giving you. Because if you take decisions and you speak on behalf of your organization, something that will bind the organization and cause damages, you can, you can recognize that career is kaput and you are, you are finished. And Satan didn't do it, but you did it with your mind. So therefore, the rule of agency is this, which is implied. An agent must not be reckless in his mouth. Let the Bible not say it. Be quick to hear, be slow. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Am I talking to you? Because you need to understand, the things of the physical, you will understand easily. But once you understand that, if I take you to spiritual now, forget it. I mean, you are going to go to the highest cloud today. I, I didn't hear what he's saying. Somebody's accuracy in dispensing authority will be so sharp and decisive. Yeah. Satan doesn't like it. He doesn't want you to know his agent. He, you are his agent. Does all the witch doctors and the voodoo priests and Babala are they not agent of Satan? So if you want that, if all of us know that these people are agents of Satan, easy. We are what? Agent of who? God. Yes. That's where I'm going. I think I will stop talking about uh, business now. Let me talk about, about you and the Bible because I brought you to the place to really understand this now that, you know, Babalao of Obiama in Jamaica, Babalao in uh, some parts in Nigeria, voodoo priests in uh, Haiti, and witch, witches in England, and Satanists in England, America. And they're all agents of Satan. We call them agents of darkness. So what do we mean by that? They can act on behalf of Satan, and Satan will do that. If they say to somebody, curse him, Satan will now afflict the person. If they say we give you sickness, Satan will now give the sickness. Because they are agent of the devil. Anything they say, Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. John 10, 10. So his agent, what they have? Kill, steal, and destroy. Anywhere killing has to be, they act. Anywhere to be destroyed, they act. Anything that they have to see, they act. The agents. Isn't it? So now, let me talk about you. No, you know that you are agents of God. Jesus said to you, whatever you bind whatever you lose is open check on earth if you say no heaven will say no on earth if you say yes heaven will say yes however agents speak 
by the mind of their organization. England is supplying Ukraine weapon. You cannot see any ambassador of England saying that we will be supplying, as far as we are concerned, we will be supplying by tomorrow Russia weapon. The moment that agent said that, he stops his authority as agent. He's taken away from office. So a Christian cannot speak contrary to the word of God. You become non-agent. You are on your own. As much as it is in companies too. <laughs> there is a limit to the authority of an agent. If you act alone, then you will be culpable. If you go to the place of crime, your agency power does not cover you. And the company have to prosecute you. So a Christian who speaks, if you are truly of God, you will speak in line with God. Because you have a book of governance that gives you the actual authority and apparent authority. But so far, this scripture says, whatever you buy and whatever you lose. So, don't forget this. As it is that the ambassador of America will not say a word except what America has sent that ambassador. And when he says it in line with what America is saying, the government in America will just execute it. Similarly, on earth, anything we decree or permit, heaven will sanction it. Anything we bind, heaven will bound. That's why we can tell a demon, I bind you spirit in the name of you. And you see manifestation. Demon will fly out of people. You know, you have seen the number of that happen here. You will see many more from this hour. All right? That's the reason why you can say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask this to happen. I'm going to this interview tomorrow. This is what I, I dictate. And you go there, that's what will happen. Oh, I want this business, Lord. I'm going for this business, and I decree this to happen. And when you get there, people may not get through there, but you get through it. You have testimonies of uh, one of the students, or some students here, who said, there's a particular one who said, uh, gave a testimony recently, that he was, he was flagged for plagiarism. And the consequence of plagiarism in academic standard is that he will even fail everything. All right? That's it. But he, he cried to God that, but Lord, you know I did not plagiarize. I wrote this thing myself. And when they canceled with me, they said, okay, we looked at the whole of the thesis. Just correct this paragraph. And they allowed him, and he went, he corrected the paragraph, and yet he came out with first land. Those things are not easy. People didn't do up to that. They would just drive them out of university. You don't understand. Agent theory. You are God's agent. Whatever you permit in your life, that's what we permitted. Whatever you do not permit will not stand. Now, let me say this to you. I want you to void your heart completely from your expectation by God in the area of life you should work. You know why I'm saying that? Not because your position is void of godliness, but I'm saying that your position as an agent is not based on your godliness, not based on your power, not based on your godliness. It is something that is based on the office that God just gave you as a son or as a child. So if you are a person who is still struggling with God, you know, everything they tell you not to do is what you do. There is a place for that, that God deals with that. Huh? We read it last week now. Ezekiah's son. When Ezekiah was good and the son was bad, to the place that the son killed his own children and offered them to Molech. Did God remove him as a king? No. He sent him to exile. Where they put, they put hook on his mouth. And God punished him very well. A Christian who is going to pornography, who is doing all manners of stuff, you dress anyhow, yeah, I own my body, I own my... God will punish you. I'm not praying. You made a mistake to have accepted Jesus. He will punish you. And when he punishes you, make sure that you are the only one who enjoys it. 
But anyway, you see, in that punishment, if you cry to God, <laughs> hey, we answer, you come back. But you must repent. That's what happened to that guy. He now, in his exile, recognized that, ah! My father served the God of Israel. What came into my head? I didn't obey my father. I didn't serve God like my father. I now brought idols. Ah! I now began to, to sacrifice my own children. Oh, oh, God! Kill me, God. I'm not worthy to live anymore. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm, and the Bible says God saw his heart full of pain and sorrow and asking for mercy. And the Lord stretches the hand of mercy. But he was still a king. Agency, sorry. Am I talking to you? Because somebody can say that, but I'm living that kind of life. I see call on the, on the, on the Lord and the Lord still answer me. And because, you know, your position as a son is different. For your misbehavior, there are people in God. They are called angels. As they bless, they also have Cain, Koboko to torture. The ones that did not hear, <laughs> let him hear. <laughs> let him hear. And you see him going, hey! Apostle, I said, What is it? I don't know what is how drunk to my eyes. Okay, then you two go and pray. <laughs> Apostle to pray. All of us are in the battle. The Bible says we wrestle not against. What I will not do to anybody is to say that ah, someone comes down, hey Apostle, I had a nightmare. Oh, Apostle, this is happening to me. As I say, something is working my body. I've never prayed for anybody who said that. I ask him, who did you offer your body to? Whatever you offer your body to where you are out of church, that's the one that works in your body. Go and collect your body back and then give it to the Holy Ghost. You know, if something is working in my body. You don't need to be prayed for. I'm hearing voices. Ah, the Bible says, my son, my children hear my voice. The voice of stranger, I will not follow. It didn't say you won't hear voices. It said you will not follow it. So then don't follow it. No, no, somebody will say that. Let us pray deliverance, deliverance. Hey, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Pray for you. No, 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 no. We don't do that in Christ with Tabernacle. What we do in Christ with Tabernacle is this. You are welcome, Pastor. What we do in Christ with Tabernacle is this. You come to me that something is working in your body. I ask you, are you born again? Yes. The Bible says, offer you your body. To, I say, so who did you offer your body to determine who walk in your body? For me, I got a feeling everything gonna be all right. Hey, 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 hey. Holy Ghost is the one working in my body. If Holy Ghost is not working in your body, something else is working in your body, then tell that thing not to work in your body anymore. Put an end to it. Whatever you did that make the thing work in your body, shut the door. Excuse me. In CFT, you do it yourself. Am I talking to somebody here? You are God's agents. You carry the mandate of heaven. The authority of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is given to you. And so Jesus said, without authority, ask anything you will. As long as you say it's not good, heaven says it's not good. As long as you say stop, heaven says you stop. As long as you say this be, heaven will say yes. As demons answer the agent of Satan, angels answer the agents of God. Your authority has no limit. That's what Jesus said here. Whatever you do, you bind. But let me say something to you now. Let's go to the same Matthew chapter 18. And we read from verse 18. We're getting to the end of our meeting. 